Okay, so I can't say good morning anymore on Fridays. Now it's good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. And what I wanna to do today is dive a little bit more into the chakras we started last week. And um, this week I want to dive into the lower triangle, the first three chakras. And the first three chakras, they're the place where we um, express our higher consciousness into this world into what we perceive to be solid form, right? We, we feel like our skin is solid and the objects that we work with in this realm are solid. Well, nothing is really solid. Everything is energy moving, right? So the lower chakras, um, it's where we really begin to manifest our identity. It's where we begin to come to a place where we can express our dharma into this world. And so they're really important chakras and they tend to get, um, I don't want to say a bad rap, but a lot of times we feel like we want to move into those upper chakras because like they're cool. They're the, the light, etheric, you know, angelic uh, realms of energy. But those lower, denser realms of energy are really, really important because it's the whole point of that higher consciousness to come here and to express into this world and to be able to merge all of those energies together as that expression. And so that's what the chakra system is about. It's being able to you know, take all of that higher consciousness and move it through our wisdom, our intuition, and move it through our truth, our purity, move it through our hearts, and then begin to express it into this world of form. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but I, well, first I want to um, read something that I came across in this book. It's a Rumi book. So Rumi is this amazing, most of you are probably familiar with him, um, a poet, a mystic, an ancient mystic, and there's this translation that I came across just last night. I picked up this book out of nowhere and um, opened it to this page and it's all about the chakras. So close your eyes. And as you do, begin to start to develop a more conscious relationship with that root chakra. Begin to really notice the places where your seat touch a blanket or the mat or the floor. And begin to think of the word root. Like grounded, supported. Think about trees and what happens in their roots. They're nourished and they're nurtured. And there's this foundation that's created that can withstand the mightiest of storms. So begin to consciously root into your seat. And this just read, it's um, a chapter called The Body of Separation. And this translation is called the radical practice of beholding the divine. So he talks about gazing at the divine, about always being aware of the divinity inside of us. Many of our traditional religions and spiritual paths unwittingly contribute to the very separation that they seek to heal by their insistence on splitting the human being into two distinct parts, a body and a soul. And by then elevating the value of the soul by simultaneously denigrating the value of the body. These traditions teach us the body is the problem, right? And it's also taught that we, must be that we must transcend the body in order to find the divine inside of us, that the body is like a fence of barbed wire that the soul must leap over in order to free itself from imprisonment. And he goes on to talk about the practice of gazing at the beloved, and he says, in that practice, just the opposite is true. The body itself is the path, the doorway that we must pass through, the chamber into which we must enter if we wish to reclaim our birthright and connect back to our soul. So the body itself, beginning to embrace this body and get to know it and feel the sensations within it is the path to connect with our soul. The problem is not with the body. The problem is that we have created an erroneous belief that all we are is the body. In the world of separation, we identify ourselves very narrowly with our physical, visible body to the exclusion of everything and everyone else, the space and objects surrounding us, the distant stars, other bodies. And the direct result of this belief is an implosion of identity that splits the world into two. And then he talks about, paradoxically, the way we can free ourselves from this limiting belief in separation that all we are is the body, is to completely surrender and embrace the lived experience of the body itself. When we allow ourselves to relax into our physical presence in this moment 
and actually experience what the body feels like, we realize that this belief does not accurately reflect the reality of that experience. The lived experience of the body can be known only through an awareness of the minute shimmering sensations that can be felt to exist in every one of its parts down to the smallest cell. Sometimes you feel these sensations like a subtle tingling or an electric current passing through you. Other times they gather together in a compacted ache or a generalized feeling of dullness. They might feel like soft falling rain one moment only to turn into the most malevolent thunderstorm the next. And then a tropical sun may peek out from behind the clouds and dry everything off. Sometimes they feel like chorus lines of millions of millions of DNA strands dancing with abandon. And other times, the tiny tips of their shores barely graze your skin. Other times, legions of stormtroopers throwing themselves into battle as strong surges of feelings erupt through your body with passionate intensity. These sensations are constantly changing their form and feeling from moment to moment, billowing and subsiding. He goes on to say that only through kindling an awareness of the whole body as a unified field of tactical sensation can we become whole, move beyond our fearful and claustrophobic belief and our isolation and separation, and enter again into the soul's embrace in the domain of union. One of the greatest tragedies of human life is that we've been subtly influenced by our culture to block out and squash the awareness of our body by resisting the currents and flows of the sensations that can be felt to animate it. And then we wonder why our soul remains so elusive, apparently in hiding, unwilling to show its face. So this struggle, this constant hunt for the divine inside of us, what Romy is saying is that the answer is in becoming more aware of those energies that dance inside of you all the time to begin to develop an intimate relationship with the chakra system. Take a few more breaths, nice, long and deep, bringing the breath all the way down to the root. And let me get pause there for a moment, holding that breath as it merges with the mother energy below. And then as you exhale, feel that supportive, amazing energy moving up. Take a few more breaths like that. Noticing the texture, the feel of the energy that's rising up through the root. So interesting, the root chakra is a masculine energy, yet it's the doorway for the mother earth, the mother energy that enter our bodies. Feel that sensation of that masculine energy holding the doorway open so that the mother energy can enter and move in. And then bring your palms together, heart center, noticing the sensation there. We're going to inhale for Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Om Namo. Guru Dev. and feel. Oh, is the creative aspect of the divine that dances through us. Namo, to call upon. Guru Dev, that inner wisdom, that outer wisdom, the energy of wisdom that flows through all things. Take 
Take a deep breath in. Feeling root lock, squeezing the sex organs, the rectum, the navel center up, really squeezing everything up. Root lock, sending that mother energy up, up, up. And then exhale, relaxing everything down. And we'll move into Ad Gade Name, our next chant, celestial communication version. I believe you all know it. Three times. Ad Gade Name. Juga Gade Name. <clears throat> Sad Gade Name. Siddhi Guru Dev Name. Ad Gure Name. Jugad Gure Name. Sad Gure Name. Siddhi Guru Dev. Name Ad Gure Name Jugad Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siddhi Guru Dev Name Pause and feel. Bringing your attention to that space right below the navel center, your second chakra. Feel the energy and pulsations there. The seat of our creativity, our sensuality, our sexuality. It's the place that we really dive into that energy of childlike play. Right? When the energy is balanced, we play in this world. We co-create with the divine. We experience that, we experience that merging that when we talked about. The merging of the domain of the divine, the physical. Take a deep breath in, bring that prayer up overhead. Pull that root lock one more time. Reach your fingers up to the sky. Feel as though the crown of your head is being pulled up toward the sun. And then as you exhale, moving through your own energy, feeling the sensation, maybe with new eyes, noticing as you move your arms slowly through your auric field what your energy feels like today, right now. You can even feel a smile curl at your lips as you feel yourself being held by you. As your fingers touch the earth, you feel the embrace of Mother Earth as she reaches back for your hands and she holds them in hers. It's so powerful because we dance in union with everything. Take another long deep breath here with your focus on that second chakra, the flow of water. the sweetness, Svadhasthana, the sweetness, the sweetness of life, the sweetness of who we are. We are all, every one of us. It's amazing energy of pure love. And then gently place your hands on your knees. Bringing your focus one more time to that seat. 
the first chakra, Muldahara, the foundation, the earth energy. Feel the foundation it creates for you as you begin now to make narrow torso rolls, really little rolls around the pelvic floor. As your torso rotates. Like a spoon stirring a pot. Very gently though. Beginning to feel the energy at that second chakra flowing like water, rising up from the root. The root is our right to be here, our right to exist. It's all about our basic instincts and our basic needs. When it's balanced, we feel grounded and stable, secure. So feel that root create the space for the next chakra, the energy of Svadhisthana to flow. And start to open that circle a little more, going to a little deeper, torso rolls. This is the place where we birth everything into this world. Right? Some of us children, some of us ideas, creations. Some of us birth this atmosphere of love, this space where people can really begin to open their hearts, open their truths, release the stories. The next time you come forward, pause for a moment and continue those wide circles in the opposite direction, nice and wide. So this chakra, the second chakra represents our relationship to others the one-on-one -on -one relationships with our lovers, with our children, with our friends. The root is all about the tribe, the community, the family. The root is where we store our family of origin stories. The second chakra is the place where we store our guilt. where we find shame in our emotions instead of that freedom to feel them. Begin to narrow that circle now as you come back. Reeling the energy in, really noticing how much control you have with your physical body over the flow of that energy. How when your attention and your intention is placed there, those things automatically begin to flow in cooperation. Right, your mind, your body, your energy. All of the bodies come together. When you're ready, let yourself come to a place of stillness. Feel that energy of play, those peaceful relationships that just flow into your life when the chakras in balance. Feel that energy of peace. Take a long, deep breath here. Then move your focus to that place above your navel, the solar plexus, the third chakra, Manapura, the lustrous jewel, the city of jewels, the translation. It's your power center. This is where you really move into your right to manifest your creations into this world. It's the chakra of the ego. And we need the ego because the ego is our identity. It's who we are in this physical world. It's how we express that piece of the jigsaw puzzle that I always talk about that we are. The ego is a beautiful thing when it knows that it's here to work in cooperation with everything else, that it's not king of the hill, right? That it's just another part of this beautiful energy. So feel the energy of you there at that place right above the navel. It's your digestion, your ability to digest food, digest ideas digest relationships, digest pain. Feel the power there. And then inhale your arms up overhead. Interlace your fingers, point your fingers, point straight out, all the other fingers are interlaced. And the left thumb for women is over the right, for men it's the right over the left. And we're gonna move into Sat Kriya. It's a gentle Kundalini Kriya that works all three of the lower chakras and really works that 
navel center. So it's core work without a whole lot of movement. So what you're gonna do is let those fingers reach up to the sky, your arms are framing your ears, let your body relax, and then we're gonna together begin just starting to rhythmically recite Sat Nam. On the Sat, you're gonna pull your navel up and back. Nam is short and relaxed. So Sat Nam, 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 keep going. I'm going to be silent or I'm going to stop saying Sat Nam so I don't take you off of your own individual rhythm. You can allow your eyes to roll up toward your third eye. That activates the pituitary gland and releases beautiful secretions in this physical body that allow us to relax, to experience joy, to feel the energy of being uplifted. A minute and a half here. your arms begin to get heavy, bring your shoulder blades deeper on your back or reach up a little higher. If you absolutely have to, it's okay to bend your elbows just very slightly. But non means the truth of who I am. I am truth. We speak our attention, our intentions into the world with great attention in this navel center, our power source, our relationship to ourselves. And we declare I am truth from this place of power. All of those patterns and those fears that we stay stuck in begin to dissolve. And all of a sudden, like a rose opening, there you are, your truth, expressing into this world. Inhale deeply, squeeze that pelvic floor up. Applying Mulaban again, root lock. Stretching those fingers up. If someone were pulling on those pointer fingers, trying to lift you off of your mat. Keeping your arms where they are. Exhale. Relax everything but your arms. Let your arms continue to reach up. One more time. Inhale so deeply. As you do, Imagine your spine lighting up all of the colors of the rainbow, the chakra energy moving through that spine, moving up, up, up the Shishumanadi, the central channel, up through those fingers, and like a lightning bolt connecting to the energy of the divine, infinite energy. And as you exhale, let your hands come down to your heart, prayer, pause, and feel. The more that we ignite the center of power, the more that it uses its fire energy to dissolve things like shame and self-judgment. All those old stories that start, those family of origin stories, those past life stories that start in the root, we balance the root chakra and it rises up and it gets emotion in the second chakra and then that emotion rises up and then it transforms into something useful to us in that fire center. From here, you can open your eyes, release your hands, bring the soles of your feet together, coming into Baddha Konasana, but not, don't bring your heels too close to your groin, make it a nice wide diamond shape. Place your hands on either knee. 
and then begin to move your head forward, but don't go all the way down, just move forward and then begin those torso rolls here. Using your hands on your knees to support you. Go nice and slow. And as you close your eyes, imagine in your mind those colors of the rainbow surrounding you. And as you move through them, feel yourself being kissed by the energy, the vibrational energy of each of those colors, that healing light. So all the chakras, they do have colors associated with them generally. And what determines the color is the rate of its vibration. So for the root chakra, it's traditionally red or black or brown. For the second chakra, it's traditionally orange. And the third, yellow. And I say traditionally because when you're working with your own energy, there are no absolutes. Lots of information from the outside, but that inner wisdom is your guiding light. So if you work on your root, and every time you work on your root, you see green, and that's your color. Trust that. The next time you come forward, pause, move in the opposite direction. Again, feeling the grounding of that seat, feeling the openness of your hips as that watery energy flows, releasing those old stories and patterns. And feeling that navel energy propelling you around in that circle, powering you, giving you the energy. The first chakra gives us our right we acknowledge our right to manifest our desires, our dharma. In the second, we begin to connect the energy that creates that into reality. And in the third, we develop that energy so that we can actually manifest what we came here to do, to be, to have, to hold, to love into the physical world. Come to stillness, come to center. Bring those heels in, into, in toward your groins a little bit more, a little closer. Let your hands now move down to your toes and then slowly begin to dive down towards your toes any amount. Coming into a little bit of a forward fold. Forward folds are beautiful to balance that root chakra energy, the second. Folding into yourself. Noticing the sensations, maybe beginning to notice where maybe there's a little bit of stuckness somewhere or where something feels a little too open. So the chakras, they work in, in concert with each other. And you can do things like frog pose or sat kriya actually balances the entire chakra system as a whole. But when you can really notice when something's out of whack, if like, for example, you know, you're feeling really fearful one day. Fear is one of the shadow energies of the root chakra. And so you feel really fearful and you notice that, you observe yourself. And so you do some first chakra work, you do some seated poses, you do you know, maybe a little crow pose, something that really moves and opens your root. And you work on that specific chakra when you can bring that chakra back into balance. Then all of a sudden you get an idea, a sense of how your second chakra is feeling. And if it's balanced, then you can move to your third and go, oh, wait, I'm feeling a little guilty today. I'm feeling a little, you know, out of sorts. I'm feeling like I can't step into my words. And you can work on that chakra. So the more that we can be aware, the more that we can consciously work with this energy that's always there. Another breath. And then slowly make your way up. Bring your feet into easy pose. Do a few spinal flexes here just to get really get that spine moving, flowing. You can play with spinal flex to target any one of those lower triangle chakras. So imagine yourself moving from your root, just kind of swaying 
that pelvic floor forward and back as you do these beautiful spinal flexes coming from that energy, the sacrum. And then you can imagine a little string moving right through the space of your second chakra, pulling that lower abdomen forward and back, moving the energy and spinal flex that way, targeting the second chakra. And then imagining that string moving up above the navel into the solar plexus, pulling back and forth from that space of fire. But each one of those targets the front and the back a little bit differently. And our chakras extend to the back body. The front body is what's going on now in the here and now, what's moving us forward. The back body is more about past lives, about our past history in this life, about our karmas. Come to stillness, roll over your knees onto all fours coming into tabletop. Once you get there, check your foundation, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. Feel the energy of your toes, your knees, your palms, your fingers on the earth. Take a nice long deep breath here. And then bringing your spine into alignment so that your neck is an extension of the rest of your spine. Begin breath of fire, inhaling and exhaling, navel moving back, in and out through the nose, even quick breaths. When you wake up in the morning, you spend a minute doing breath of fire before you get out of bed. It moves that fogginess. Sometimes I wake up with this little sinking dullness, a dullness that Rumi spoke about. Right in the center of my gut, this sadness. If I do a minute of breath of fire, I sit, I feel that energy begin to really dissipate. And all of a sudden I'm ready to go instead of ready to crawl back into bed. Take a deep breath in, squeeze that root lock, hold that energy. Exhale, let everything go. Curl your toes, bring your hips up to the sky as you move into downward facing dog. Upside down V. Kundalini is called triangle pose. And move your knees a little bit if you like, wiggle your hips, really stretch out. We've been sitting this whole time. And so both the root and the second chakra are chakras of eliminating energy, apana energy, energy that releases. The solid waste, the physical sense releases from the first chakra. Right, it's all the organs of elimination. And then we have the kidneys and the bladder, and all of that in the second chakra. So the watery energy. Slowly begin to walk your hands back towards your feet. Let yourself hang in forward fold for a moment, really feeling gravity. There's all these cooperating energies around us. The energy of gravity works in concert with our chakra energy. It really allows us to move into this lower triangle. Without gravity, then we wouldn't know what it's like to feel grounded. Feel gravity pulling your head, your feet down toward the earth, receiving that mother energy. Become aware of the energy of the chakras moving up and down your spine through your body. So the chakras, they, they spin clockwise, counterclockwise. And my experience with them is that when they're spinning clockwise, they're releasing energy. When they're spinning counterclockwise, they are, I'm sorry, the opposite. Counterclockwise is releasing. Clockwise is absorbing energy. And so they know what they need for balance. Kind of like when we breathe in and out brings in energy that we need to move through our vitality. 
And then as it releases energy, it's stagnant energy that we no longer need, it makes space. So become aware of that movement. And then slowly begin to bend your knees. You're gonna bend them really deeply. You're gonna to start to bring your butt down to the ground as if you were gonna sit in a chair, coming into a form of squat, malasana. And then bring your butt back up. And one more time, lower all the way down as far as you can go. So not a true malasana yet, you guys look great. And then come back up. And then this time, just bend your knees slightly. And then begin to inhale your arms wide and out, coming up to a stand. Reach up to the sky. Grab a hold of some sunshine and bring it to your heart. And we're gonna do a few Kundalini exercises that work on a healthy bowel system. And so when our bowel system, when our elimination system is in balance, then we're not constipated. We don't have diarrhea. We, we just have this normal, these normal bowel movements that feel so cleansing when they happen, right? And they don't feel like, you know, we're cramped and we're holding on. So the more that we pay attention to the elimination system, the more space that we have to allow all the other beautiful energy that we like to talk about, because who likes to talk about poop? <laughs> but it's a part of who we are, right? And so the more that we keep that healthy and moving, the more space there is for that other energy. So you're going to bring your arms out to a T and you're going to bring your legs a little wider apart. And we're going to do windmills, but you're not going to alternate back and forth. Start by taking your right hand, bringing it down towards your left ankle, left arm up to the sky. Inhale back up and move back to the same side and just keep going the same side, not too fast. Just develop a rhythm. Close your eyes and just keep going, same side. Feeling that core energy holding you as you reach down, feeling that core energy help you rise back up. Third chakra, it's where our confidence our vitality, our inner balance comes from. It's our self-will. It's also self-judgment, shame, despair. It's where those obstacles, it's, it's when that third chakra is out of balance, that's when we call on Ganesh and we say, help me. Help me. How do I, how do I bound over these obstacles? And the answer is always to find balance in that third chakra. Next time that you come up, stay up. Take a deep inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky in a V. Fully, fully inhale, pull that root lock. As you exhale, arms back out to a T and begin that same rhythm on the other side. Opposite hand reaching to the opposite ankle. Moving and breathing. The more we pay attention to that third chakra, the more we can move forward in our truth, break those patterns that disempower us. Own our yes and own our no. And the more that we move into the flow of water, like this flowing movement that you're doing right now, the second chakra movement, the more we can move into that place of emotions and sensuality and sexuality and embrace it all. The more we can allow our emotions to flow, the less we'll feel that they're unstable, that they, I mean, we hold our emotions in and then all of a sudden they burst out because we just can't hold them in anymore. And then we think that we're, you know, these emotional wrecks. And it's because we have been holding back emotions that need to flow every day. We build a dam and then when the dam bursts, we call ourselves crazy or emotional or we get embarrassed or ashamed of the emotional energy that makes us human. Next time you come up, stay. 
Take a deep inhale, bring those arms up to a V. As you exhale, bring those arms back to a T and then take a few alternate windmills going from the first side and up and then the second side and up alternating back and forth. Next time you come up, stay up. Inhale your arms up to the sky, bring them down to your heart, step your feet closer together. And then begin just some, some standing flows, inhaling your arms wide around, up overhead, palms together, bringing that through your midline, diving down to the floor. Bringing those arms out and wide, inhaling up, and continuing that same flow. Moving the energy through the entire chakra system from the crown to the third eye, to the throat, to the heart, the solar plexus, to the lower abdomen, to the root, the mother energy. The next time that your hands pass through your heart, stay there. Pause and feel. Second chakra is a feminine energy, it's that lunar energy. And the third is a masculine energy. So the mother energy below entering through the masculine energy of the root, flowing to the feminine energy, the second chakra, and then blending with that masculine energy of the third, a dance of our power, our strength, our will and our softness. Feel all of that inside of you now. It doesn't matter who you are, what your history is, your family patterns. There's nothing that can't be changed in this moment when you connect with that inner and outer divinity. Feel boundaries, walls crumbling right now. You can bring your attention to your truth. Inhale your arms up to the sky, dive all the way down to the floor. And then just for a moment, grab a hold of your ankles with your hands and begin to pick one foot up and then the other walking forward on your mat, doing a little elephant walk here. This is a really beautiful way to ground. If you're feeling like you know, we're coming into Vata season, into the fall season. And if you feel like you're being taken away by the wind, move backwards once you get to the front of your mat. Do a little bit of elephant walk. Feel the heaviness, connecting those hands, holding onto those ankles, the awkwardness, right? And then pause, release your hands. Grab opposite elbows, sway from side to side for a moment. And then letting your hands move down to the mat. Walk forward into downward facing dog. Let's walk your hands forward into downward. Yeah, there you go. Take a nice stretch here. And then let your knees begin to move toward the mat. Once you find yourself in tabletop, a few cat cows. And then come to center, sit back into easy pose. I'm going to do a short Chant, med chant breath meditation before we make our way to our backs. So this is a meditation for the third chakra. Another way to really get that navel energy going, right, without doing sit-ups or anything physical. But there is a lot of 
um, strength in our attention and our intention. So it's, it's called Mahan Gyan Agni Kriya. And you're simply going to bring your hands together so that the pinky sides of the hands touch. And then close those hands so all of the fingertips touch, but not the thumbs. You're going to bring the thumbs to the inside of those pointer fingers so that they're actually nestled inside, pointing straight ahead. Right? So it's almost like you have like you, this little cave that you have your thumbs resting in. Bring that right in front of your navel center, right in between your navel center and the bottom of your sternum. Close your eyes. And we're going to take a deep inhale, and I'll just give you an instruction before we start. We're going to inhale, and then as you ex exhale, you're going to say to yourself, Echo and Car, Sat Gurd Prasad, Sat Gurd Prasad, Echo and Car. You want to do it at least four times on one breath before the breath is depleted. And then you'll inhale and do it four times again. Make sense? Is everybody good? Okay. Now the idea is to work up eventually to eight times on one breath. For me, that was really hard. So start with four, and then when you feel that your diaphragm can take a little more, go to five, and then go to six. Maybe not today. Let's go. So get into position. Take a deep inhale. And begin. Echo and car, sagura prasad, sagura prasad, echo and car, echo and car, sagura prasad, sagura prasad, echo and car, echo and car, sagura prasad, sagura prasad, echo and car. Echo and ka, sakura prasad, sakura prasad, echo and ka. Inhale and do it at your own pace. Three minutes. After the next one, relax your breath, keep your hands where they are. Let the mantra begin to fade away. Just feel the energy of this mantra. Mahagyan means the great knowledge, and Agni is the purity of fire. And the quote here is, with your breath, you can touch your soul. Anything we feed into that great purity, that fire of intelligence can be transformed. The veils burned away. 
your vision or truth right there in front of us. When you know your truth, you cannot help but love yourself. And when you can love yourself, you cannot help but love the world. Recipe for world peace. When we open our eyes, you can write that down. Take a deep inhale. Pull that root lock. Squeeze everything, your spine, your fingers, everything nice and tight. And as you exhale, open your eyes, make your way to your back. Once you get there, stretch your legs out long. And then inhale them up to the sky. And just begin to open your legs in a V and then close them and open and close a few times. Strengthening that third chakra. And this chakra is balanced. We move into this place of confidence where we have the vitality to move forward and take action. We're no longer stuck. Next time your feet come together, keep them together. Bring your knees into your chest. Keep your hands down though on the, on the mat next to you and begin to kick your feet as if you're trying to kick your own butt. This is a beautiful way to feel grounded. So think about babies, right? This is what kids do. They have a fit when they feel like they're off and they can't gain their ground. This is how they ground themselves. They kick and they scream until all of a sudden they feel comforted again. They feel that connection. They feel okay. Kicking yourself in your butt. And then bring your feet to stillness, bring the soles of your feet together, coming into supine Bhattakonasana with your legs up in the air. You can hold on to those toes, you can support under your knees, whatever feels good. And then grabbing a hold of your toes, straighten your feet up toward the sky and back down a few times, a little bit of frog pose on your back. Frog pose is an amazing pose to balance all of the chakras. If you're just not sure, if it feels like everything needs a little tune-up, a few frogs on your back, standing up, and you are good to go. The next time you open in frogs, stay there for a moment. Feet are up toward the sky, yep. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Bring your knees into your chest. And bring the soles of your feet to the mat. Plant your feet. Bring your arms out to a T and you're gonna just shift your hips slightly to the left as you let your knees fall to the right, coming into a spinal twist. You can leave your knees bent or you can straighten your legs if you want a little bit more of a twist. And come back to center, plant your feet for a moment as you shift over to the right, knees to the left, gaze to the right, those shoulders glued to the mat. Glued with gentle loving glue. So the first chakra, the power to stand in our right to be here, our right to exist, our right to be alive, our right to manifest our desires, our dharma. The second, the energy of connection where we begin to create, to imagine, to dream, to formulate, right? So our desires begin to take shape. And that third chakra, the energy to take action, to manifest 
that write that creation into physical reality. Come back to center. And just place your hands on your knees, your knees toward your chest, and begin to move your knees in circles away from each other, toward each other. And as you come to stillness, take any more final stretches or twists that would feel good. Make your way into Shavasana. And once your legs are long on the mat, take your hands and place them over your, hovering over your third chakra. And just begin to circle them like we did with our knees, away from each other and toward each other. Just moving the energy of the third chakra. And then as you continue those circles, move your hands down so they're hovering over your second chakra. Weaving and moving that energy. And then move your hands down so one is over each thigh and do that same motion of circling away from and toward. And then let one hand rest on each thigh, actually touching your thighs. Take your right hand, move it to the space right below your navel, second chakra, leaving your left hand on your thigh, your root chakra. And then move your left up to your power center, keeping your right where it is. And then let your arms come to the sides. Feet splaying out, palms up, moving into Shavasana. Consort of clouds, beloved of the flowers. No boundaries can find my flight or wanderings. Slipping through the cracks in your armor, I am with you, calling you to come forth and dance with me in the downpour. My energy spills out of you no matter what your circumstance or mood. Find me in joy or in the darkness of your worst hours. Welcome me, throw your arms wide and celebrate each time you find my fragrance in the lilacs. I am anywhere you focus your awareness. Call on me, remembering that you are essential to the universe, your uniqueness no less precious than the stars. If you forget, I'll remind you with a whisper or a dream or a touch so soft, you'll think a butterfly just landed on your arm. Begin to deepen your breath, bringing your awareness to the space around you. Let your head rock gently from side to side. Your wrists, your ankles, your toes, your fingers, finding movement. 
Bring your knees in towards your chest, palms, soles of the feet together. Rub, creating that beautiful fire. When you're ready, bring yourself back to that point of stillness. You need to rock up and down on your spine or gently roll to your right. And we'll meet in a comfortable seat, palms together, eyes closed. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Please join me in sealing our practice together with a long satnam. Deep inhale. Sa Nam. Sliding your thumbs to the space between your brow. Dropping your chin into your own radiant beauty. Be loved, be lead, be true to you. Satnam, everybody.